Number 9 Visual Technology Corporation was a manufacturer of video graphics chips and cards from 1982 to 1999. Number 9 developed the first 128-bit graphics processor, the Imagine 128, as well as the first 256 color, 8-bit and 16.8 million color, 24-bit cards. The name of the company, as well as many of its products, e.g., Revolution, Imagine, Pepper, Ticket to Ride, refer to Beatles songs. At System Boot Up, Number 9 Cards Video Bios Splash Screens Display Short Phrases from Beatles Songs Related to the Cards Model Names. Card Model Names were usually preceded by a Number 9 moniker. History Number 9 was founded in 1982 by Andrew Najda and Stan Bialek as Number 9 Computer Corporation. The company was renamed Number 9 Visual Technology Corporation in the early 1990s. For most of its existence, Number 9 was based in Lexington, Massachusetts. Number 9 initially made an Apple II accelerator board, then later moved into the design and manufacture of high end PC graphics cards in 1983. Number 9 was one of the premier, higher-end graphics card companies into the early 1990s. In the mid to late 1990s, Number 9 began to lose market share to competitors in both the price and performance arenas. Number 9 was slow to respond to the boom in 3D graphics, continuing to emphasize high-quality, fast 2D graphics. On December 20, 1999, Number 9 announced a letter of intent for S3 Inc. later S3 Graphics Co. to buy substantially all assets and intellectual property of Number 9. By mid 2000, S3 had completed the acquisition of Number 9's assets and Number 9 had ceased operations. In 2002, two former Number 9 engineers, James McLeod and Francis Bruno, formed Silicon Spectrum, Inc., and licensed Number 9's graphics technology from S3 to implement in FPGA devices. For five years after Number 9 closed its doors, a former employee kept Number 9's website up and running, with driver downloads and a forum available for self help. A volunteer and Number 9 enthusiast provided regular, impromptu technical support on the Forum for the last two and a half years the site was active. Several former employees checked in to help occasionally. The website finally went off the air for good in March 2005 and the domain name was taken over by an online gambling company. In 2013 Francis Bruno from Silicon Spectrum tried to fund an open-source GPU based on a number 9 ticket to ride IV-derived design. Started on the crowdfunding platform Kickstarter.com, the campaign was unsuccessful as only $13,000 of the requested $200,000 was gathered. Despite this, source code was released under a GPL3 license in August 2014. <laughs> Products The first number 9 graphics cards were ISA bus, pre-VGA standard cards that had no graphics accelerator chips. In the latter 1980s to early 1990s, number 9 made ISA and MCA bus graphics cards based on Texas Instruments Tiga coprocessors. Beginning in the 1990s, Number 9 made AGP and PCI graphics cards with their own proprietary graphics accelerators, the Imagine Line GPUs. Contemporaneously, Number 9 made AGP, PCI, VLB and ISA graphics cards using S3 graphics accelerator chips. Their very last AGP card used an Nvidia GPU. Early pre-VGA video cards Early cards no coprocessor, pre-1986, pre-VGA standard The Revolution series were large, full-length cards that ranged in price from $1,995 to $2,995 at introduction.
Topic: Tiger cards. Number 9 graphics cards using Texas Instruments Tiga co-processors were made from about 1986 to 1992. The Texas Instruments TMS 340X0 co-processors were coupled with custom number 9 designed application specific chips which could only handle very primitive graphics functions such as clipping. Nevertheless, this was a major accomplishment back in the day. With the exception of the GXI Lite, all of the Tiga graphics cards were large, full-length cards. Cards using a Tiga coprocessor were in approximate order of introduction. The Tiga-based cards were very expensive in their day, ranging in price from $995 to $2495 at introduction. Topic Number 9 video cards using number 9 GPUs The Imagine series GPUs also called graphics accelerators were number 9's own in-house designs. The Imagine series went through four generations. Imagine 128 Imagine Imagine 128E Imagine 2 T2R marked ticket to ride sometimes marked imagine 3 t2r4 marked ticket to ride iv the imagine 128 gpu introduced a full 128 bit graphics processor gpu internal processor bus and memory bus were all 128 bits however there was no or very little hardware support for 3d graphics operations the imagine 128e added gouraud shading 32 bit z buffering double display buffering and a 256 bit video rendering engine the ticket to ride imagine 3 supported wram and both the agp and pci buses had a 3d floating point setup engine by linear filtering and perspective correction gouraud shading alpha blending interpolation fogging, specular lighting, double and triple display buffering, 16, 24 and 32-bit Z buffering, MPEG-1 and MPEG-2, and hardware MIP mapping. The Ticket to Ride IV included an integrated 250 MHz RAM DAC, support for up to 32 MB SDRAM, full scene anti-aliasing, per-pixel fog, specular, and alpha effects, 10-level detail per-pixel MIP mapping, bilinear and tri linear filtering, 8 bits per texel, 8 kilobytes on chip texture cache, hardware MPEG-1 and MPEG-2, and a full IEEE 754 floating point pipeline 3D rendering setup engine. Number 9 graphics accelerators were used on the following number 9 model video cards. These 1990s video cards were number 9's flagship cards of their day. The Imagine 128 and 128 Series 2 were very expensive. None required a heatsink on the GPU. The original Imagine 128 was introduced in 1994. The Revolution IV was introduced in 1998. In addition to a standard analog VGA connector, the Revolution IVFP, also called the Revolution IV 1600SW, had an OpenLD digital interface connector for the Silicon Graphics Inc. SGI 1600SW digital flat panel monitor. The Revolution IVFP was one of only a few standard video adapters with the OpenLD interface for SGI's 1600SW digital flat panel monitor. Some others were 3D Labs Oxygen VX1 1600SW, IO Data GAR NF30, PCI, and Siemens Nixdorf S26361D964 cards in some Siemens Nixdorf computer. SGI's 1600SW video adapters were proprietary on board to their O2, 320, and 540 graphics workstations. Formac made a limited number of PCI cards with OpenLD for Apple Macs. The OpenLD interface is neither physically nor electrically compatible with the modern DVI-D interface. This was the early days of digital video connections and there were several competing, incompatible standards. 
OpenLD for standalone displays disappeared, but several aftermarket manufacturers made adapters to convert OpenLD to DVI-D so more modern video cards would work with the 1600SW monitor. The 1600SW monitor was far ahead of its time and was eagerly sought long after it was out of production. For this reason, for a time, Revolution IVFP and Oxygen VX 11600SW video cards commanded a premium price in the used market, long after they were out of production. <laughs> Number 9 video cards using S3 graphics processors Number 9 had a close business relationship with S3 Graphics throughout the 1990s. While the Imagine series GPUs and cards were Number 9's flagship products, contemporaneously, Number 9 produced a series of less expensive video graphics cards using S3's GPUs. The S3 based cards were usually introduced in groups of three, at three price points below the Imagine cards. They carried the same model name, but different model numbers and GPUs, except for the State Route 9, number 9's last, best S3 card. None of these video cards had heat sinks on the graphics processing chip GPU. The S3-based video cards were, in approximate order of introduction. Topic: <laughs> Number 9 video cards with heat sinks. Number 9's last two graphics cards were the only ones to require heat sinks on the GPU. Both outperformed the Revolution IV. The State Route 9 was Number 9's last retail card. It used an S3 Savage 4 GPU with a small heatsink on the GPU. The SDRAM1 with VGA connector is Savage 4 LT, the SGRAM1 with DVI connector is Savage 4 Extreme. An OEM only AGP card using an NVIDIA TNT 2M64 GPU and 16M, or 32M SDRAM. The heatsink is larger than the one on the State Route 9. This NVIDIA based card has been variously called probably unofficially, the M64 or Pepper M32, but it was never a retail, end user product. Topic. Pixel Fusion joint venture On April 20, 1999, Bank Boston Business Credit announced it had provided $15 million for No. 9 Visual Technology. On August 9, 1999, Pixel Fusion Limited and No. 9 Visual Technology Corp. announced they had entered into a relationship whereby No. 9 would use Pixel Fusion's Fusion 150 chip to design a very high end 3D graphics accelerator card for AGP Pro equipped PCs. The card would use 120 28 to 1024 megabytes Rambus RDRAM, while the Fusion 150 chip would contain 24 megabits of embedded DRAM. The product was to be delivered in the first half of 2000. However, no retail products were made following the announcement. Topic. See also. List of defunct graphics chips and card companies